A hearty good morning to all of you. Myself Preeti Kumari pursuing PhD from NITRR Chandigarh. My area of working is biomedical instrumentation. Today I am here to present my paper for International Journal of Engineering and Technology. My paper title is Classification of Movement and Motor Imagery Based Neural Signals. My paper ID is 77. These are the outlines to be covered in this presentation. So first of all, let's start with the introduction to motor imagery and its relation with ERD and ERS, that is event related desynchronization and synchronization. So motor imagery is one of the most common movement related EEG signal, electroencephalography signal, which is produced either by actual movement or by imagination of movement. So, whenever a movement or imagination of movement is performed, there will be change in particular frequency component related to neural activity. Means, the frequency component there can be reduction or there can be increment. So, reduction in a particular frequency component related to neural activity enhancement is termed as event related desynchronization that is ERD. Similarly, increment in a particular frequency component related to suppression of neural activity is termed as ERS. So sometimes this ER ERS can be seen even when the movement is not performed actually. Recent research works suggest the motor imagery of different body parts have different have significant relation with specific sensory cortex area, which can be seen here in pink color. Right. So in the figure, area in this pink color controls the movement of different body parts. The region encircled at the top of the head controls the feet and leg movement and the region encircled in pale blue color here you can see in both the hemispheres control the hand movements again these two regions in orange color near to ear in both the hemisphere controls the face and tongue, tongue movement so what happened actually when we So what happened actually, when we actually perform the perform a particular movement or imagine the movement, motor imagery produce ERD in the corresponding hemisphere and ERS in the opposite hemisphere. Therefore, the mu components that is frequency components in the range 8 to 12 hertz and beta components that is 14 to 30 hertz frequency components of EEG signal will increase or decrease their amplitude and spectral power. Here the red color shows indicates an increase in spectral power. So here we can see from left hand for left hand movement there is an increase in right hemisphere uh, right uh, hemisphere increase in power spectrum in right hemisphere and for the right hand movement there is an increase in power spectrum in, in left hemisphere so this and also here we can see these two positions are c3 and c4 positions on the scalp where the electrodes were placed for for data recording of uh, of motor imagery from the above discussion till now we observed that if we could classify the motor imagery based neural signals accurately then this can be used for different medical applications such as rehabilitation or move mobility assistance applications so the problem has been stated as an error-free classification approach for motor imagery based neural signals 
to get an efficient control in particular medical application. The major objectives are to demonstrate the feasibility of motor imagery based brain computer interface and the second one is to propose an error free classification approach for the two class mental task which can be used for smart healthcare systems further. Scope of the work is very vast as the proposed work can be extended in many ways. The implementation of this work can facilitate the disabled persons to communicate with their surrounding using their own neural signals so there will be less dependency on other people. The complete experimental procedure has been shown in this block diagram which will be discussed one by one in the next slides. So the first step is data acquisition. For data acquisition, the protocol was the experiment starts with a fixation cross that appears in the center of the screen. After two seconds, a beep sound is given as auditory stimulus as a warning. Then for three to four point two five seconds, Q stimulus will be given and an arrow pointing to either left or right appears on the screen which which indicates that in which direction subject has to uh, uh, has to imagine in which movement subject has to imagine then for 4.25 seconds to 8 seconds the subjects are asked to fixate at, uh, on the arrow and imagine corresponding hand movement then this was the uh, with this the trial will one trial will end at 8 second then for from uh, 0.5 to 2.5 second there will be a time gap which will be provided between two trials for relaxing the subject Then the second step is pre-processing and feature extraction. For pre-processing, a bandpass filter having cutoff frequencies 0.5 Hz to 30 Hz has been chosen to enumerate the high frequency noises. Then a notch filter was applied to suppress the 50 Hz frequency power line interferences. Apart from that, there was a impedance check. Uh, uh, impedance check has been performed before data acquisition to ensure that impedance for all the electrodes were below five kilohertz to to uh, to get the better signals. After that, for feature extraction, ERD and ERS has been illustrated. First of all, band power has been applied, and then the amplitude samples and power power percentage during the imagery has been considered as feature vector to be given to classifiers for training and testing purpose. Also the row EEG signal were passed through a bandpass filter with cutoff frequencies 3 to 3, 34 Hz and was used in feature selection. The step three is classification. So for the classification, the feature vector has been fed, which was the feature vectors which was developed with relevant features, has been fed to three well-known classifiers, support vector machine, then bagging classifier and Adaboost classifiers. The classifiers has been trained and tested offline in MATLAB environment to differentiate two class EEG signals. After that, to get the final result, to get the final class, majority voting technique has been used 
which ensures 100% classification accuracy. So here the majority of results of all three classifiers has been taken, has been considered as a final class for a particular data. So uh, and and in this particular in this proposed work during the training of all three classifiers we have different uh, the different uh, the classification accuracy has been plotted and has been shown in the next slide. So from the figure we can observe that all three classifiers shows minimum classification error after around 5.5 second. So accordingly majority voting also shows zero error after 5.5 seconds since it takes majority of all three classifier results. So as I told in previous slide the proposed system built different classifier models at different time points with different classifier parameter values. So, if you pick classifier models built at 5 second or maybe uh, around 5.5 second where the error is minimum for all three classifiers, the majority, majority voting technique will show 100% accuracy at every time point. So, the uniqueness in this work, in this proposed work is that here we are, we are having different classifiers at different time points. So for all this, for all the uh, classifiers built, we have corresponding uh, corresponding classifi classification error. So accordingly, we can we can choose which classifier built which, which classifier gives zero uh, zero or you can say minimum accuracy that we will pick for the for the further uh, majority voting techniques. So from here we can see that for majority voting. We have zero error after 5.5 seconds or maybe around after 5.1 seconds and this has been already concluded in the in the next slide in a, uh, the compression has been shown in a table which we can see in the next slide shown in this table that we have the error classification error for two class uh, for SBM for support vector machine we have this uh, 1.2 percent there was a classification error then for bagging there was a 9.4 then for boosting for uh, that is 5 percent and then for majority voting that was almost uh, zero that is 0.1 percent error we got or you can say that was uh, that was around 100 percent you can say so here you can see that the majority voting shows less error or you can say almost zero error so that so we can apply this for any other ap applications here from here also we can conclude that the though bagging and boosting classifiers itself use by uh, itself use majority voting in in uh, that is majority voting technique is inherent in these two methods in these two classifiers bagging and boosting still we have better result with the support vector support vector machine rather than bagging and boosting why this is because this bagging and boosting classifiers are very complex classifiers so with this classifiers we got uh, we we can get uh, we can get better results with this classifiers for uh, for more number of classes but for two classes there there is no need to use uh, we can say bagging or boosting the svm can be the can be sufficient that that is very simple linear SBM that is binary SBM will be will be sufficient for this for this two class eh? and simple class classifier shows um, shows uh, no, means poor performance you can say uh, in compared to support vector machine also still if we if we have this these three classifiers so we can apply majority voting to get the better results so from here we can say that this table this table illustrate that if only the classifier model built at time point 5.5 second as we have already discussed will be picked from all three classifiers and will be applied for multi voting technique 
then the proposed approach will be proposed approach will give 100 percent accuracy at every time point then uh, we can conclude that from this that the results reveal that the proposed novel classification approach can improve the performance of two class bci system with a higher classification accuracy the proposed method can be used for further different kind of mental task classification problems as well as for exoskeleton and rehabilitation application however any any single modality can be able to manage only a certain kind of task so for the future scope for the future work we can think that we can uh, uh, plan that a multimodal system can be developed to further increase the number of commands and make the system more viable so this was all these are the references thank you